And just like that, we back. The world tour continues in magnificent Montreal as we return to North America for the first time since 2019. After back-to-back -back masters in Europe, the pro circuit hops across the Atlantic for an absolutely loaded Montreal Masters. We pay tribute to retiring Edmonton superstar Steve Sir, who bid an emotional farewell to 3x3 in Montreal. Oob's prize recruit Dayan Maisorovic opens up about how joining a new team helped him become the maestro once again. And get to know Jordan Liggins, who stepped up for me on the mic in Canada while I was away and had the best rookie debut since Candace Parker. Plus, stay tuned to the end of the magazine for an exciting top five plays of the tournament. Twenty twenty one is the year of the twenty one point game, so you know what I'm about to say. It's quick, it's epic, and now it's Olympic. He does it on the second attempt, the Tissot buzzer beater at the free throw line. They make good this time after losing in Lausanne. Deberson is an iconic 3x3 destination and once again brought the best out of the players. Oob went one better than in Lausanne with a thrilling 21-19 victory in the decider over Riga. Red Hot Oob will have back-to-back -back in their sights but won't have Deberson MVP Miroslav Pajšalic in Montreal. The balance of power might shift to a reloaded Riga with Las Manas catching flight KLM Express to Canada as the Latvians desperately try to break their world tour drought in 2021. Back in their surroundings, maybe it's time for North American teams to strike with Edmonton hoping to send off sharpshooter Steve Sir with one last yes sir, while a struggling Princeton are set to unleash a big weapon, Robbie Hummel. Come on, don't tell me you've forgotten about the walking bucket already. Oh, Canada, we back in Drake's land, so you know it's going to be lit. Day one in Montreal separated the contenders from the pretenders, with seven of the top eight seeds getting through, and the big boys flexed their guns like Magneto. Without Miroslav Pajšalic, Oob needed somebody to step up, and Strahinja Stojicic did just that by putting defenders in straight spin cycle. We welcome back Olympic gold medal hero Carlos Lasmanis, who returned with a bang and added some sauce, too, to lead Riga to a pair of dubs. Ooh! Lasmanis! But the biggest star on day one was Thibaut Vorvort, who was once again must-see TV after low ratings in Deverson. The Belgian sharpshooter lit up Edmonton and hit from the logo like a free throw. My guy hit six twos, six of them, and finished with 14 points to provide more entertainment than HBO. New sensation Antwerp beat Edmonton and also Manila Chooks TM on day one. Now, I know I've already buried the league, but the highlight of day one was the absolutely crazy Pool D blockbuster between Doha champs Amsterdam Talent and Pro and Princeton. The struggling Americans had hoped to get on track with the return of main man Robbie Hummel and the World Cup 2019 MVP hummed early. But the Dutch weren't intimidated and Julian Jarring proved he had the juice, but not quite the finish. This one came down to the wire, and with seconds left, Jarring this time made no mistake to give Amsterdam the lead by one. But money time equaled Hummel time, and he pulled out a two-piece to remind everybody he still won a 3x3's best. Oh, Robbie Hummel in his first game back! What a shot from the corner! I made that shot, you know, my guys were fighting me when I was open, but we got to play better, you know, that's the thing. And Amsterdam's a really good team, but uh, we, we definitely need to play better if we want to do well here in Montreal. Princeton kept their fans on edge against American new kids on the block Omaha 3-ball. 
Sire Carrington wanted to teach the newcomers a lesson with his own block party, but he was returned to Cinder shortly after. The newcomers showed no fear, and Dylan Travis went at Humble's crown with a game-high 10 big ones. The pride of USA went down to the final seconds, but Travis couldn't finish at the rim, and Princeton survived a scare. Amsterdam Talent and Pro and Edmonton progressed despite losses, while number nine seed Winnipeg was the lowest seed to reach day two. Number seven seed Radondavaris Taurus was the highest seed to miss out and were joined by Old Montreal, Omaha Three Ball, and Manila Chooks TM. Sir might be the best shooter in 3x3 history. My guy knocks down shots like it's happy hour. Sir's so good that he holds the all-time shootout record with 17 at the Chengdu Masters back in 2019. He's got 15, it's tied, it's beat, it's history. He's got five Gs in his pocket. The shootout competition ends in a thriller with a new record. That record's gonna take some time to beat, but all good things come to an end and the Edmonton star bid an emotional farewell to the world tour in Montreal. He couldn't be prouder, couldn't be happier. It's been a phenomenal career, and it's only the start of greater things in your life. And uh, as a father, I love you and all the best. <laughs> As a kid, I wanted to be a basketball player. I, I wanted to play college basketball in the States, and I wanted to play for Canada. 3x3 afforded me that. It, it gave me an opportunity to play at a World Cup. It gave me an opportunity to play at an Olympic qualifier. It really was a dream come true. I played basketball most of my life, but 3x3 helped me fall in love with basketball again. Uh, after uh, an up and down 5-on-5 five five career and a lot of uh, bumps along the way, and. Because of that, I'm extraordinarily uh, grateful for the sport and the people involved in it. So uh, really, uh, from the bottom of my heart, this has been a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I'm fortunate to have had it. And when I started playing 3x3, my daughter Lila was just born, and now she's five. So to see her grow up through this uh, while I've been involved is, is a special thing, uh, because one of my very first events, she was in, in a stroller, and now she's up bringing the jersey out with, with my older daughter, Isabel. It definitely uh, provided a timeline of uh, being involved in this sport and just how wonderful it's been to, to myself and to my family. In retirement, the Nanjing Masters 2019 MVP will happily remember all the beautiful places he's traveled to on the pro circuit alongside his beloved teammates. Playing 3x3 is like being in a band. You know, you're traveling with three or four guys and you're playing here, you're playing there, the venues change, but you really get a chance to see just uh, how much uh, strength are in the, the ties that you have with your teammates. And, uh, and that was a big part of it too, was just being able to share this with some awfully special people on my team, uh, with Team Edmonton and Team Saskatoon, and uh, just with the, the FIBA people as well and the other teams that we competed against. Being a part of 3x3's growth into a global phenomenon, Sir wants to stay involved in the 21-point game he loves so much. And I think that's great news for everybody. The sport is moving at a rapid pace. The players are improving so much. The teams that were already good are getting even better. And in order to play at a high level, you have to be fully committed, I think, to being the best player and the best team you can be. And uh, I can feel that sun setting for me, but um, that doesn't mean I won't still be around the sport because I love this sport. It's, 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 it's the best. All right, here's a look at the quarterfinal bracket, which features eight of the top nine seeds. First up, we had an instant classic between Riga and Amsterdam Talent and Pro. The Latvians were slow out of the blocks before turning to their Cape Crusaders. Carlos Lazmanis had the first swing, and Norse Miezis then added a punch. But the Dutch masters wouldn't go down easy. Arvin Slachter played bully ball to get Amsterdam within one of victory, but Riga had more lives than Tom Cruise and Edge of Tomorrow to level things up. But Julian Jarring had enough, and his Tiso buzzer beater finally ended Riga, who are still without a Masters title this year. 
Uh, I really like the way we came out the gates, and in the end we forget to finish the game, so happy to see Julian make such a tough shot for the end to win it, and uh, on to the next one. Would this be Steve Sir's last ever World Tour game? Edmonton hoped for a fairy tale send off against Oob, who had more W's than Djokovic at Flushing Meadows. Strainia Stoichis took off on Air Canada not once, but twice to send Oob to the semis. But Sir was able to let out one last yeser in his final game for Edmonton. Take a bow, Steve. But the best was saved for last with Princeton being sent back by Canadian team Winnipeg. The Americans look done and dusted, down 18 to seven, before Zaire Carrington shouted, it's not over yet. Princeton then incredibly scored 12 of the next 13 points to force OT, where Carrington had the friendly roll at the line to complete one of the greatest comebacks in 3x3 history. We've had a few games where we just start off slow and then we have to fight our way back in. We are good at that now. We'd like to not have to be good at that. We'd like to be up by a few points, but we're fighters, we're scrappy, and it got the job done today. Riga had a disappointing Masters, but Carlos Lasmanis at least gave him a dub in the Wilson shootout contest. He started hot, then he nailed a money ball to say na 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 Batman. Your two-point shootout winner in Montreal. Amsterdam's easy 22-13 win over Lausanne Sport booked the date with Amsterdam Talent and Pro in the semis, while Oob faced Princeton. In the first semi, Antwerp eyed revenge against Amsterdam Talent and Pro after losing like a classic quarterfinal in Deverson. Julian Jarring and Thibaut Vorvoort had a dunk off as another thriller loomed. It rained in Montreal, and let me tell you, Amsterdam made it hell with a 12-3 run that ended up unplugging must-see TV as they reached their second Masters final of the season. I always feel like I'm supposed to go for the best, be the best, and every month, every year, we get better, so I'm really confident in this team. You just knew the second semi was gonna be a thriller, and it had to be with Princeton continuing to audition for a Christopher Nolan film. Damon Huffman showed he's a tough man with the and one as Princeton started fast. Oob's hot streak was in danger, so Strahinia Stoichens went low like Lil John. The Americans had the answers like Alexa as Big Z put it down and Robbie Hummel went bang, bang. But 2021 is becoming the year of Oob as Marco Brankovic put him in front and it came down to the last play. Huffman tried to force OT, but Stoichens said, not in my house, to end Princeton's run. Oob's hopes of back-to-back -back masters remain on track. Oh my gosh, that is gonna be on replay in Huff's Nightmares. Now it's time for everybody's favorite segment. It's the dunk contest, which was presented by Podium Productions in Montreal. We only had two contestants in Montreal, but what a pair we had. Reigning World Tour dunk champ Peter Grabo Grabowski was looking to regain his dominance having won the opening two Masters before missing Deberson. He faced a tough challenge though against his hero, Justin Just Fly Darlington, the dunk legend, and the Canadian who definitely had the crowd support. After goose egg to start, Just Fly needed something special and he pulled out a dunk only he can do the cartwheel dunk. That one got the fans on their feet. Some gymnastics and hoops. And the last Simone Biles-esque. <laughs> that brought out the best in Grabo who made it look so easy with the behind the back yam to match just fly with a trio of nines. It was almost like the crowd missed it. It was so easy, but that is not easy, ladies and gentlemen. In his final dunk, Just Fly lived up to his nickname as he soared through the air over MC Vincent. All Grabo had to do was nail his final dunk, but he didn't want it the easy way. He wanted to end on a high, literally, as he easily cleared a tall volunteer for the power dunk finish that earned him straight nines. Grabo continues to be in a league of his own this season as the pole makes it three straight in 2021 and takes home the $3,000 check.
It might not have quite been the gold medal expected from Serbia at the Tokyo Olympics, but bronze is pretty dang good too. Just as Dejan Majstorovic, who received a hero's welcome along with his teammates when he was honored back home. Since I started to follow sport 98, whoever won the medal, they come into balcony and I always go there to wait for them. And I always dream about like, come on, is it possible to be up there? And when I go out, it was amazing when they pronounce my name. That's the, the, the best thing can happen in my career. A bombshell was delivered in 3x3 at the end of 2020 with the breakup of powerhouse Novi Sad, with Mai Sortovic and Marco Savic taking their talents to serve rival Oob. Separate with Novi Sad was unexpected and uh, in one moment Strahinja Stojacic called me and then I like, do you guys need uh, two players? Savic and me, like we separate from Novi Sad. You're gonna get a lot of points. We're gonna be the third or fourth in the world. So we sit with, with Stojatic and Brankovic, we talk and we agree to start to practice together. Then we called Rdero and Dacha to be our coaches for this year. After so many years playing with longtime teammates Dusan Bullet and Tomas Ivo said, Mike Stojatic faced the exciting challenge of developing new chemistry. We have Strahinja Stojatic who is a very good dunker. Pašalic he loves highlights, so he always try to do something behind the back, between the legs, stuff like that. Brankovic and me, we go on the layup, we're gonna make the layup. Brankovic can dunk either, so only I am without any spectacular uh, plays, but I try to improve with my experience. It hasn't taken the new look OOB team long to mesh with the Serbs lighting up the world tour in 2021. We have system in defense now. If they score and nobody guilt, it's system guilt. So that's very important, and I think we play very good the last couple of tournaments because of that. Somebody shoot, I'm the most closest guy to the basket, and I get rebound. When I shoot, I always go to the rebound. You are tired, you don't go on offensive rebounds. But now I try to push myself when I'm tired, go on offensive rebound, go on offensive rebound, or defensive, of course. After years of being the hunted with Novi Sad, it's been a refreshing change for Mai Stortovic to be part of a team being the hunter on the world tour. With Novi Sad, I already go in the champion team, and I know that every tournament for us is only first place, but now you go to the team who finished last year 8, 10 on the ranking. So I have here more motivation to win something, and uh, I'm still very happy because of Debrecen. I hope we're gonna do it back to back here in Montreal. Oob have set the standard in 2021 and look to stretch their lead on the top of the World Tour standings with a second straight Masters title. But Amsterdam Talent and Pro were in for the drive. Whatever Oob does, they can do Uber. Dejan Majstorovic always turns into the maestro on the big stage, and he got the Serbs going early. His partner in crime, Strajinja Stojicic, joined in on the two ball as they led five to one, faster than you can spell ooh. Amsterdam needed to return serve, and Demel Vanderhorst came through with the goodies. When Arvin Slochter went bottoms up, the scores were tied, and it was anybody's game. Then Stojicic took over with a splash and a floater to pull Oob clear. Stojicic was doing it all, making dimes dizzy in the process and posing for the camera to take the game by the scruff of the neck. Stojicic with the spin move and one! He wants it! Dimes responded to give Amsterdam hope, but this was Stojicic's night. Get him in the dark contest, people because he's bouncing like he's at a little baby concert. Stojicic was feeling it, and Oob were within sight of the title. It was party time for the Serbs, who finished it off in style, fittingly, with Stojicic, whose celebration was almost as good as the slam. No better way that this game should have ended with the number one overall seed is just proving why they are the best. That nice pass by Bronco and the dunk by Stojicic. That's back-to-back -back masters for Oob, who have been the team to beat on the world tour. 
It's unbelievable. One month ago it was impossible, but we play amazing and I'm very happy. After his 12-point explosion in the final and being the top scorer in the event with 40 big ones, Strahinja Stojicic was runaway MVP to remind everybody he's not merely Mr. Robot's little bro, he's a man of his own. Oob stretched their streak to 10 straight games on the world tour and go home with $40,000. We are live! We're here. We're here! It's us! Let's get to know our new play-by-play -play announcer, Jordan Liggins, who made her debut in Montreal. And didn't she just do a great job, y'all? Having played ball in college, Liggins has made a swift rise in sports media, including working for popular website, The Ringer. But a random DM opened up a whole new world. My path to Montreal was from a DM from the FIBA creators. I started doing some live streams for Twitch, which led to play-by-play -play announcing for the Women's Series and the World Tour. I feel like I've lived five different lives already, just like six years out of college. It's different from writing about basketball to podcasting in a long form about basketball. And then Twitch, I really felt like I'm in this room talking to myself, hoping that people around the world are listening. And then play-by-play, -play, being able to communicate what I'm watching is a very different part of your brain. So it has been different every step of the way, but at the center is my love for basketball. That hasn't changed. Before she started in Montreal, she needed a few tips. So who did she ask? Me. I got to talk to Kyle, the voice of 3x3, and he gave me some great tips about, you know, how the day was gonna go, different tidbits to say when there's dead time, how to fill the airs and make sure that you're adding to the experience that they're watching. But most importantly, he said to be myself. So that was the biggest advice. Vincent. No, he's, he's not looking at me. I guess I don't count. Oh. <laughs> Red Bull had 3x3 events from little kids all the way up to my friends that I had been playing basketball with. And I was like, what is this? They are in such good shape. How can I train with them? It was a total different game, but the high energy, high intensity was what made me fall in love with it. The first thing that caught my eye was the 10 minute sprint and the 12 second shot clock. Who can get the shot the quickest and it has to be good. And we see time and time again, the best players in 3x3 move without the ball. They're creating shots for themselves. They're creating plays for their teammates. And I think that is so fun to watch and very different from five on five. Haven't been up close and called into action. Liggins has got the itch to lace them up again. Well, my basketball career started when I was five years old. I'm taking a break right now, but I think I'm going to start playing again after watching basketball this weekend. <laughs> First off at five, what's prettier? Marco Tayo's crossover or the dime? At number four, he's an Olympic gold medalist and also top rated on Michelin because Norris Miezis can cook up a tasty dish. In at number three, he's back. Robbie Hummel still loves those Tiso buzzer beaters, don't he? Robbie Hummel, former NBA player, Mr. Big Shot. And Princeton steals it away from Amsterdam. That was a battle all game long. At number two, Damon Huffman's the hero at the buzzer. Oh, wait, no, he's not. Thanks to the lean, mean Strahinja Stojicic, a.k.a. the stick, who flew in to save the game with the rejection. Game saving block as Oob comes back. 
out on top. Talk about a one-two punch. Ziggy Montes Simona set the table for Sharunis Beniushis, and he did the rest in a picture-perfect play. Dunk contest <laughs> champion in Lithuania throws it down. After a trio of crazy events, we just need to catch our breath for a quick moment. But don't worry, the World Tour returns very soon and we shift back to another iconic European 3x3 venue, Prague, Czech Republic, who plays host September 18th and 19th. Remember, you can always follow with the hashtag 3x3WT on FIBA 3x3 social media channels on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch.